to make this question answer session more effective and useful i would like that each member comes out with one question at a time and uh, preferably short and up to the point as informed on the topic of the day prophet muhammad peace be upon him in the various religious scriptures of the world or on the topic islam and comparative religion or any question a non muslim may have asked muslims which they were unable to answer and the members the guests can ask the question in the mic or they can just send a letter thank you assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh we are really lucky alhamdulillah that our dr zakir karim sahib is here in madras but since the question and answer session is there i would like to just put forth before him the questions have been asked to me by non muslims very often but i am still not able to answer to them in a correct perspective ma'am dr sahib it is our firm belief that the believers will go to jannah and the non believers will go to hell but a hindu or a christian often ask me that we are born in a hindu family or we are born in a christian family and naturally we will continue to have to follow the same religion it is not our fault whether we will also go to hell for ever or shall we also go to heaven and second question i used to tell them you are supposed to read the holy quran and understand the religion but another firm believe is even a muslim we should not supposed to touch the quran without wazu we have to be wazu and then only we must read quran but how can a non believer who is not a muslim when muslims we ourselves cannot touch the quran how can a non believer can touch the quran and read that is a question i am not able to answer could you please answer this thank you the learned brother has asked two questions the first one is that the non muslim say that according to islam only the believers only the muslims will go to jannah how are we to blame that the hindu and a christian if he is born in a hindu family a christian family we should blame god almighty well god almighty put us in a christian family and a hindu family so how according to islam isn't your allah subhanahu wa taala unjust that because we are born in a non muslim family we will be put to hell the answer that you can give is that according to our beloved prophet muhammad peace be upon him every child is born in dinul fit dinul fit means the innate religion every child is born as a muslim irrespective whether he is born in a hindu family a muslim family a christian family a parsi family or a buddhist family every child is born as a muslim what is the meaning of the word muslim muslim means one who submits his will to allah subhanahu wa taala later on by the influence of his elders the influence of his parents influence of a teacher a beloved prophet said he starts doing idol worship he starts worshiping fire and he goes away from sirat al mustaqim and goes on the wrong track therefore when a non muslim accepts islam we prefer using the word revert than the english word convert convert means going from one track to the other track revert means every human being initially is a muslim by the influence of other people he goes on the wrong track and later on he is reverted back to the correct sirat al mustaqim that is islam so therefore revert is a more appropriate word for a non muslim who becomes a muslim than the english word convert so every child is born in dinul fit if you ask what proof do you have today there was a research done on two tribes the kapauku tribe and the tribe of australian aborigines these two tribes did not come in contact with modern civilization till as late as 1950 when the researchers went and tried to find out the way of life they were following islam in everything except in name they believed there was one god they believed he was almighty he was omnipresent he was omnipotent he did not beget nor was he begotten they did the sujood when they prayed to this god almighty they were following islam everything but in name they didn't call themselves muslims but indeed they were muslim so if we do an experiment today that if you take a child from a hindu family one from a christian family one from a buddhist family the moment the child is born 
isolate him from the other human beings let him come up absolutely without in contact with any other human being isolate him and let him grow up see to it he gets food but does not come in contact with any other human being after he grows up if you try and learn his philosophy it will be everything of islam but in name because this is the innate religion allah subhanahu wa taala has put in every human being the fear of allah subhanahu wa taala and the religion of islam and quran says in surah araf chapter number 7 verse number 172 and 173 that allah subhanahu wa taala before the human beings came in this world he bought the children of adam from the loins and he asked all the human beings before they came in this world they were asked the souls were asked that do you believe there is one god and all of them testified yes we believe there is only one allah subhanahu wa taala later on the memory was washed and they have come into this world it is their duty to find the truth but even if they don't find the truth allah subhanahu wa taala takes it upon himself to deliver the message of islam it's the duty of muslim to dawa but in spite of that allah says in surah fusilat chapter number 41 verse number 53 he says sanurihim ayatina fil afaqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana lahum anna alhaq that soon we shall show them our signs in the furthest regions of the horizon and into their soul until it is clear to them that this is the truth allah takes it up upon himself that in every individual soul besides showing his signs in the horizon the sun the moon the trees etc he will even make it clear into the soul that this is the truth but later on after accepting the truth many people they agree with it but they don't accept it because if they accept it if they become muslims they may go lost in business they may lose their friends so for material gain they do not accept the truth they agree with it but they don't accept it and allah says very clearly that by the age of 40 every human being will agree that there is one allah subhanahu wa taala at least once in the lifetime so the message of allah subhanahu wa taala is given to every human being and every human being is born as a muslim later on he goes to the wrong track regarding that will muslim go to jannah only by saying la ilaha illallah muhammad rasulullah you do not get a ticket to heaven there are many muslims who feel that only by saying the shahada you go to jannah the criteria for going to jannah is mentioned as i said in my talk in surah al asr chapter number 103 verse number 1 to 3 we says wal as innal insana lafi khus illa alladhina amanu wa amilu salihati wa tawasaw bil haqq wa tawasaw bis sabr that by the token of time man is very in a state of loss except those who have faith those who have righteous deed those who exhort people to patience and perseverance those who exhort people to truth that is to dawa and islam these are the minimum four criteria for a person to go to jannah if any one of these four criteria is missing according to surah al asr you shall not enter jannah you may be a good muslim you may have iman you may be offering the salah you may have gone for hajj but if you don't do dawa if you don't deliver the message you shall not enter jannah all four criteria are required for a person to enter jannah not only saying the shahada the person should have belief should have righteous deed that is should be honest etc should invite people to truth do dawa and invite people to patience and perseverance only being born in a muslim family will not transport to jannah hope this answers the first question regarding the second question,